action. All right. Actually, I should ask if there's any questions before I start off on this morning. Okay. All right. So this morning we're, uh, you know, going to be the whole day. In fact, we'll be talking about meta, and we'll be doing one of the, you know, foundational meta practices, which is developing meta for, you know, friend, enemy, stranger, friend, stranger, enemy, so that we, we, we gradually expand the meta. Now, why would we do that? Um, you know, lots and lots of reasons, but uh, one reason I think I put in my email as well, which is, I found this out some time ago, and it's really, really interesting, is in Samadhi practice, uh, I believe, I'm paraphrasing here, but I believe uh, one yogi came up to the Buddha and asked about uh, some meditation practice and said, "Is what is the most important thing, what is the most important foundation for good concentration um, meditation? And the Buddha said, happiness. And I thought that's quite really profound because we think of this meditation as you know, really pushing and staying on the breath and staying focused and not letting the distractions um, come into our mind. And you know, there's a, there's a great deal of sternness there. And then the Buddha says, actually, one of the most, the most important foundations is happiness. And so that was quite a revelation in uh, my own practice is to say, hey, it's all very well and good doing these meditation practices, but if you're not looking after your own happiness, um, you're, not, you're not looking after the most important foundation there is. So, meta practice, for many, many other reasons is good, but for, for one reason is it, it definitely is a great practice to bring more happiness into our own life. Um, so, we're doing it for that. And actually, I do want to talk in a moment about uh, you know, meta practice seems like giving love to everyone else. So if you're doing it for the idea of bringing happiness to yourself, it's almost like a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, an oxymoron or something. It seems like there's some clinging or some selfishness in there that you would be, you know, giving love to others in order to be happy yourself. So I want to talk about that in a moment. Um, but first of all, let's talk about, uh, remind ourselves of what metta is and, and, and the definition is love, but it's a little, or loving kindness, but it's a little bit different to that in that, uh, as we were saying last night, traditionally we love a particular person or we love a particular thing or a particular pet, okay, whereas metta has this sense of boundlessness, a sense of love for everything, everyone, every animal, you know, even trees and rocks and things like that, meta for the whole world. So there's this boundless quality and, and, and un unconditional. So it doesn't matter whether you don't know the person or you do know the person or you don't get along with the person. Um, it's, it's, we still have a, a sense of love to all beings. Um, however, uh, this is obviously difficult for us at first, particularly some of the people we have difficulty with, and so we're going to gradually work up from those that are closest to us to, to people we have difficulty with or people that we don't even really know, like strangers. Now, uh, the other thing that is important is, you know, it's one thing to just say, oh, I love everybody. It's a throwaway line, but it's another thing to mean it. And meta certainly is a sort of a, it's a felt energetic quality. So that's what we want to strive for. And that's what is healing. And that is what is nourishing. And that is what brings happiness to ourselves. So while it's an intellectual thing, and that's, you know, it has to be there as well. It has to be at the intellectual level as well. And it probably starts more so there. And we'll be doing, you know, 
sort of phrases and visualizations and so it's very intellectual but we want to bring it into the kinesthetic sense of feeling and that's where it's really going to manifest in ourselves uh, so we need to work on uh, people that it is easy to generate metaphor first and we need to try and generate that, that stronger feeling, that sense of meta first before we expand out and to, to other people and other things. Okay, so we, we do it in this order is people that are close to us and then gradually working out uh, from there. So we start with a narrow focus and this morning we'll be doing Meta for oneself and meta for, meta for benefactor um, as well. Um, and then once we once we really feel like we are um, got that more energetic quality, then we can move out to others. Now, obviously, this is a weekend retreat, and you know it's so with with some sense, you know, we're doing everything in one day, which is really not ideal because this is not something that can just switch on you know in a matter of five minutes it may I'm not saying it's not going to do that but for a lot of people it takes practice and ideally I'd like to spend one or two days on each of these categories and there's about five or six categories but we don't have a, a 10 day retreat or a one week retreat we just have this weekend so we will be going through them fairly quickly uh, but you've got the recording here um, and you can take this away and hopefully work on it uh, when you're home as well. So, starting off, the traditional uh, place we start is meta for oneself. And I think this is probably one of the most important um, uh, objects of meta and what the one that I kind of want to talk about, you know, a little bit more because it's it's so important um, you know it's considered that it's uh, very the more you the more you see in yourself and others without a sense of self-love it's very difficult to love others they're reflections of each other and time and time again you will see that the people who seem to dislike people often dislike themselves they may not say that they may try to their ego may try to inflate themselves up because they're feeling sort of inner dislike but if you spend time with them you'll see that they're critical of themselves the same with people who judge others they often have a strong sense of self-judgment time and again you see the way people act out towards others and towards their universe is simply a reflection of what is going on in their own mind. And so if they criticize you, they're being twice as critical of themselves. And it's a good actual uh, insight to really have compassion for others. Because if there is someone that you feel you're having difficulty with and, and they are being um, difficult towards you or towards others uh, one way to sort of begin to have compassion then for them is to understand that they're probably just as harsh if not harsher on themselves as they are on, on other people um, deep down but for ourselves we need to uh, cultivate a sense of meta for ourselves as really a foundation or a basis to uh, have meta for other people and if you can cultivate this sense of meta for yourself, it will naturally overflow to others. And I'm sure that we all know of people uh, who are naturally giving, naturally loving to others, and they, they do have a sense of love towards themselves as well. Um, so if you have role models, you can sort of uh, think about those role models in your meditation as well to understand how we need to develop a, a sense of love for ourselves. Um, and in many regards as well, in all of these compassion meditations, 
We can't be too strong out because, uh, and, and, then, and then give to others. A lot of empaths, you know, go out into the world to try to help others and then they burn out. And instead of helping others, they often become disgruntled and they often then start projecting some of their own difficulties if they're burnt out. They're not serving others as well as they could if they were looking after themselves, you know, taking care of themselves, you know. I think, thinking about Tracy the other night, I'm thinking, you know, you're working too hard. That's my gut feel is, you know, you've got to really take care of yourself and, 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 and not work as hard. And, but realise that, it, that, that it, in the end, it'll actually help more people um, by taking care of yourself and getting, get, you know, so when you're in an aeroplane, they say put the oxygen on yourself first before you help others. Um, another example is, you know, a doctor or a surgeon, if they get too overwhelmed by the person that they're working on and the difficulty that they're going through, and they're overcome with emotion, they're not going to be able to operate efficiently. They need to have that sense of equanimity and detachment in order to, to do a good job and to, get to, to have the best job and to be in the best state of mind in order to you know, do an operation or whatever to help the person that they're working on. So like that, um, we need to really, it's, it's, uh, it's important to put ourselves first. Now, coming back to this uh, idea, because it was a little bit of a conflict also in my mind, and therefore it might be in your mind, um, that if we are you know, doing meta practice in order for our own happiness, in a way there is some sort of selfishness there. But it's also very, very logical, and it's very, very smart, and it's very, very necessary. So we need to uh, really you know, come, come to terms with that and accept that, um, that, that the two work hand in hand. Um, and in fact, by the way, it, the reverse is true also. If you practice loving for other people, you can't help but then find that you'll naturally start to have more love for yourself. So it sort of doesn't matter which way you work in a way, developing love for yourself will naturally overflow into a more generosity of spirit and kindness towards other people and likewise practicing loving others will actually generate a sense of happiness and love for yourself so that's a little bit of a preliminary uh, discussion about this first aspect of loving self any questions on that so so we're going to be um, using the phrases and um, and um, loving oneself. So I'll go through maybe the phrases first and then we'll also talk about the benefactor. So <coughs> I've given you a sub phrases, I'll put them up on the board. Again, these are, are really from Rod the Bayer, so uh, you know, thank, thank my great teachers for these ideas and then I'll give you some more tomorrow actually, different ones or later today um, which you can use. But I think these are really, really are helpful to start with and it is may I because we're starting with self or later will be may you be and so may I be safe and protected may I be safe and protected may I be filled with happiness may I be peaceful and may I live with ease and kindness <coughs> okay so there are four phrases that you can use and I'll put them up on the board after this <clears throat> that you can use to just wish yourself the best because the definition of love in um, <clears throat> yeah in Buddhist language is wishing others to be happy <clears throat> really wanting others to be as happy as they possibly could be and so these four phrases really um, are a great a great starting point um, to, for you to use um, in this weekend. Now it doesn't mean that you have to stay with those phrases if you wanted to put in other phrases um, you're more than welcome to. May you live with joy you know um, may, may you 
um, fulfill your path, you know, or, or, or whatever. So you, you can play around with it. I'll talk a little bit about the, the phrases in a moment. Um, but that's, that's what we'd be doing. Now, interestingly, it'll be an interesting uh, meditation with the self is because on the one aspect, there's the me that is doing the wishing, and then there's also the me that's getting the receiving. So, uh, you know, you're wishing yourself happiness, uh, and then you're, you're feeling you're feeling that uh, you know you're receiving this happiness. So, what I suggest there is to sort of alternate between the two. So, for a time, you might want to spend. You know, really wishing yourself happiness, wishing that you could be you know, healthy, uh, that you can be safe and protected, that filled with happiness, be peaceful and live with ease and kindness. And then keep the meditation going, keep the meditation, the phrases going, but try and receive, to be the receiver of those phrases and feel what it feels like to have those phrases given to you. All right, so that's the basis of the, the meta meditation. Now, to be honest with you, um, especially in the West, it seems, where for some reason in the West we seem to be more self-critical than um, in the East, <laughs> in the Eastern traditions, we often have difficulty loving ourselves. Um, in fact, it reminds me of a story once we were talking about the Dalai Lama and, um, you know, I'm not sure I forgot the, 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 the story exactly right, but the, the gist is that someone asked the Dalai Lama, um, you know, so what advice would you give with people suffering from uh, self-hatred? And the Dalai Lama sort of said, oh yes, hatred's a very bad thing. We, we don't want to to hate people, you know, if you're hating other people, then, you know, that's a reflection on yourself. And then the question says, no, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, what if there's like self-hatred? And the Dalai Lama sort of looked quizzically and was like, self-hatred. And he has, a, he has a translator. So apparently he's turned to his translator and says, how do you translate self-hatred? What does that mean? And there was this banter between him and the translator. And, uh, and the translator, or he says, we don't have that in the Tibetan culture. <laughs> the, the problem is not that you hate yourself. The problem is that we love ourselves too much. And so it was, it was sort of like, this is new to him in the West, that people suffer from self-harm and self-hatred. It's not a thing. Anyway, so it is a thing here in the West. Um, so sometimes the self uh, is, is not an easy um, person, uh, not an easy object to send meta to. Um, so the second category after the self, which might actually be your first category, um, you know, for you or for, for anyone else listening to these videos afterwards, uh, is the benefactor. So really, the benefactor traditionally, you know, is someone you already deeply love. And it is often a family member, maybe a brother or a sister or a parent, but it could be like an auntie or a grandma, or it could often be a best friend, someone you know who has your, in, your interests totally at heart. You know, someone you know that generally, if you picked up the phone, they would be there in an instant to help you. That there's sort of, there's a sense of there's love, uh, you know, unquestioned love. Um, you know, really, at the end of the day, the benefactor is the easiest person that you know that you can uh, both send love to and feel that they would want to send love back to you. So, uh, you know, someone who's helped us, you know, it could be uh, like a, a high school teacher that might have helped us at one stage or you know, some sort of mentor that has helped us. And this can be the easiest person to generate love to. And as I said, at the beginning of this meta practice, it's not about 
you know, finding the most difficult person and really striving with that. We, we definitely want to make it easy because we want to be able to feel that physical energy. Um, they sort of, we, we talk about when people press our buttons in terms of they make us annoyed, but see if you've got sort of a, a love or a kindness button and see who presses those sort of buttons to, to sort of develop that uh, kinesthetic sense of, of kindness in your body. So you can feel it, feel it you know, even at the, at the uh, cellular level. Um, so we cultivate this um, uh, kindness towards this person and we need, as before, as we've talked about with the energy body, uh, we need to be creative. So you can picture the person in front of you. You can go back to a time when you felt especially loved. Maybe it was, you know, baking a cake in grandma's house when you were seven years old or maybe it was just the other day with a friend who, who looked after you. So you can visualise back there at that time. Um, we'll be using these phrases to help, you know, vocalise our feeling and feel into these phrases. Again, I keep coming back to we're using visualisations and we're using phrases uh, but in, in all respects, we're trying to get this kinesthetic sense going. So we're feeling into all of this to see what works. And that's really the, the truest sense of judgment is whether it's having a visceral effect on you. So it might be the greatest visual scene, but if you're not feeling it, then start altering the scene a little bit, try some different phrases. If you feel that one scene or one phrase is particularly meaningful, like say of these four phrases, when you say, may you be peaceful, that seems to have more resonance than the other, or the word kindness or something like that, it seems to uh, have, a, have meaning for you, it has pregnancy, it has you know, fecundity, it has, it has some sort of meaning, you can stay with that one word and just sort of allow yourself to absorb in that one word or that one uh, visualisation. And remember, how do we know that you know, it's, it's, it is touching us? And I think the best way is uh, why we're doing the meditation on the energy body is if, we're, if we're, we're being in touch with our energy body, we might may feel it in the energy body, in the, in the body. So as well as doing all of this visualisation, need, you need to be in touch with the body or the breath or ideally this, this idea of the energy body uh, in your body so that you know uh, when a certain meditation is having an effect on you and you know to stay with that meditation. Of course, everything is impermanent and you'll want to deepen that meditation and and that, that aspect, like say the word kindness, oh kindness really touches me, I'll stay with that word. And my experience is, it does deepen a little bit at first, and you go, oh that, that feels really good. Then, then it'll just dissipate. Uh, maybe there's, sometimes there's a bit of grasping involved, we go, oh I like that, and, and oh it's working now, and then as soon as that happens, the selfishness sort of kicks in and, and it dissipates. But even without that, because it's just the nature of all things to be impermanent and so they will dissipate. And so at that point, at some point, you'll go back to all the phrases or you'll, you'll um, change the scene a little bit. All right, any questions up until this point? Um, yes. Yeah. Instead of making a wish for yourself or wishing yourself, can you say, I am peaceful, instead of it being a wish, make it a statement? Uh, no, because, because the definition of metta is wishing others to be happy. Now, it just so happens that the other is also yourself in this 
first in, in this first meditation. So, for example, if I'm wishing that Gosha is is happy, uh, I can't say Gosha is happy. Gosha is happy. So I understand wishing others. Yes. And yeah. You're wishing it for them. Yeah. But what about yourself? Yeah. So this is where you you play this double role: is you really wish yourself to be peaceful, and then you feel that peace. And I guess when you're on the receiving end, you can you can recognise. Yes, well, I am peaceful. Um, I'm not saying what you're talking about is an affirmation. Yeah. And and an affirmation is also a beautiful thing, uh, but it's not meta meditation. Okay. So meditation is this genuine wish to want want one to be even more peaceful than you already are. Because peace and happiness actually are bottomless. You, there, what's you know in deep meditation, there's a sense that there is no end to this peacefulness. So wish yourself to be even more peaceful than you than you already are. Okay, and at another time you, you can use affirmations, which are powerful in themselves, but they're different. Good question. <coughs> so, uh, some other sort of guidance. Um, I've already said try to tune into what is most meaning for you, meaningful. And uh, we can, uh, we can. Some people may want to sort of be very specific, like may you. You know, may you receive that um, Mercedes Benz 300 next week uh, by such and such. Thank you know, you. <laughs> is that another gift we're getting from you? This yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it it actually it it works better if you keep the phrases uh, gen more general. Yeah, more general. Yeah. In NLP, we make them as specific as possible. Again, it's a different analogy. Here, we want to make them happy. So, ha you know, may you be happy. May you be peaceful. Uh, a, a very, very general. Now, having said that, it's actually okay in your head to visualise something very, very specific. So, you, as you're saying, may you be safe and protected, you may want to visualise someone who you know maybe has felt unsafe and that they are protected they now have someone watching over them uh, that they you know that they feel you know visualize that they get the things that they want or may you have may you have happiness visualize you making them happy giving them you know giving them a chocolate or, or whatever to try to help them uh, create that happiness. So the phrases are, are kept very general, uh, but in your mind's eye, you can visualize uh, particularities, actual circumstances. Again, because if you keep it, sometimes if you keep it too general, it doesn't catch. There's no, not so much emotion there. Newsreaders and storytellers know this because if you say, you know, there's been a flood, everyone goes, oh, yeah, another flood. But then if they interview someone who's had all their house wiped away and they're sobbing and they're crying, it pulls our heartstrings more when we know about one individual person than just knowing, you know, uh, 753 people, you know, had damage in this flood. That facts that. So, so, so you need to dive in and out of these particulars in order to sort of get the energy of meta flowing. Yeah. And then once the energy of meta is flowing, you can sort of pull back a bit and then expand out, yeah. expand it out to, to other people. All right. And then actually after a while, uh, yeah, I actually said to you during breakfast, I said, once you start meditating for a long time, if you do it constantly, you start meditating in your sleep. 
And when I did retreats, I used to do these mantras, you know, thousands and thousands of these mantras. And they would eventually get so deep, they'd just be there all the time. And it's the same with these metaphrases, is when you meditate on may you be happy, 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 and you cultivate a sense of metta, that phrase will become an anchor. It will become an anchor for you so that eventually you just have to say the words may you be happy and it will immediately trigger a very strong meta response. And in fact, it will start doing so even at an unconscious level. It will slip out without you even deliberately wishing you know, may you be happy. So it is good once you've found some phrases that you like to keep those phrases uh, over the long term. So there is, a, yeah, it's useful to have consistency in that way. Um, again, no, it's really up to you. It's your, you know, there's, 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 it's good to be creative as well, <laughs> but then there's also good to have some constancy as well. So um, that's another thing for you to contemplate. And with that, as I said earlier, Things are impermanent and there will be times uh, during today and during meditation where it'll feel really good and you'll feel in touch. And then there'll be other times where it just feels really dry. There's nothing there. And it feels like it's just a hard slog just repeating these silly phrases over and over again. You know, the seeds of aversion will be there. Um, you know, keep going. Just understand that there's purification going on at that point in time and just be aware that you're in a bit of a dry period and it's calaisis coming up they're being purified keep coming back to the phrases and it's still having effect at an unconscious level just the constant repetition of coming back to the phrase coming back to the visualization coming back to the self or the benefactor or we'll be doing other uh, objects later in the day. Um, so just you know, work through those dry periods, knowing that all of us have them. Uh, it's not that there's anything wrong with you. It's a good thing. Really, uh, another thing about meditation, which you know I, I really spoke about previously, was trying to reframe everything into well, it's good that this is happening, you know? And, and why? Because it's purifying, because it gives me more compassion to others, because, you know, whatever sort of angles you look at it in order to sort of reframe a difficulty into something which has more meaning. You're really looking for meaningfulness. That's a new word that I'm <laughs> using more and more, uh, because that has a profundity to it that will take us deeper into a deeper connection with the universe and, a, and then a deeper meditation practice. All right, so if there's any more questions, we'll have a little break and then we'll, we'll go into some practice.